In this short video, we're going to learn the first of three methods that we can use for solving a quadratic equation. And this method is by using factoring. This is based on a product of the real numbers that we call the zero products property. And it simply states that if you take two numbers and they multiply to make zero, then at least one of those numbers has to be zero. In other words, if a times b equals zero, then either a equals zero or b equals zero, or both could be zero. So if I wanted to solve a factored equation, x times the binomial x minus 5, and it equals 0. And it has to equal 0, right? There is no one product's property or five product's property of real numbers. It's just the 0 product's property. So it has to equal 0. So in this case, my first factor is x. My second factor is the binomial x minus 5 as a group. So one of those two factors has to equal 0. Either x equals 0 or x minus 5 equals 0. And x equals 0 is already solved and it's easy to solve x minus 5 equals 0. So my two solutions are x equals 0 or x equals 5. So my solution set in this case has two numbers 0 and 5. So what is it, what are we going to do? We have to make one side equal to 0 because we have that 0 products property. And then we're going to try to factor it. And obviously if you can't factor it you can't solve it by factoring. And then we'll set each factor equal to 0 and if necessary solve. So let's look at an example. I have x squared minus 6 equals x. I want this to equal 0, so I'll go ahead and subtract x from each side. Then I get x squared minus x minus 6 equals 0. And I can factor that as x minus 3 parentheses x plus 2. So one of those two factors has to equal 0. Either x minus 3 equals 0 or x plus 2 equals 0. And that gives me the two solutions x equals 3 or x equals negative 2. Our solution set then still has two numbers in it. Now here we may be tempted because we have something that looks like it's factored, but it doesn't equal 0. So in this example, I'm going to have to start by actually using the distributive property and then subtracting 15 from each side. Now it equals 0, and now I have to factor. So in this case, I'll need two numbers which multiply to make negative 30 and add to make positive 7. That would be positive 10 and negative 3. So I'm going to replace the 7m with 10m minus 3m and then factor by grouping. The first pair <coughs> has a common factor of 2m, and the second pair has a common factor of negative 3. And then inside parentheses I have m plus 5. So my second factor will be 2m minus 3. So one of those two factors has to equal 0. So either I have 2m minus 3 equals 0, or m plus 5 equals 0. If 2m minus 3 equals 0, then 2m equals 3, and that would mean m equals 3 halves. The other factor, m plus 5 equals 0, would mean m equals negative 5. So my solution set has two values, 3 halves and negative 5. Here again, I'm going to have to remove parentheses and then make one side 0. I already have a 3y squared, positive 3y squared. Again, I want to have the coefficient on y squared to be positive. So I'm just going to make the left-hand side 0. 
It just has to have one side has to equal zero. So I'll go ahead and subtract 8y and I'll add 4 to each side. So then I have 0 equals 3y squared minus 8y plus 4 and I need to start factoring. Uh, look for two numbers which multiply to make positive 12 and add to make negative 8. Those numbers would be negative 6 and negative 2. So I will rewrite the negative 8y as negative 6y and negative 2y, and then factor by grouping. And so after I take out common factors and write it as the product of two binomials, that means that either 3y minus 2 equals 0 or y minus 2 equals 0, which would mean that 3y equals 2, or y equals 2, and then dividing on the left solution, I'll get y equals 2 thirds. So my solution set has 2 thirds and 2. So this one already equals 0. Uh, what's different is that I have the square of a binomial. Certainly I can see that I have a perfect square as my quadratic term and a perfect square as the constant term. But remember, I have to check if twice their product is what I have in the middle, and sure enough, it is. I'll get a negative 12n. And so I can factor this as the square of a binomial, which really means that there's only one factor. It's repeated, but there's only one factor, which means the uh, only possibility is that 2n minus 3 equals 0, which gives me only one solution, n equals 3 halves. So let's look at a couple more examples where we can factor further. So for example, this one, 20c squared minus 45 equals 0. Uh, it doesn't look like we can factor using the difference of two squares until we realize that we have a common factor of 5. And then what's left over is 4c squared minus 9. That can be factored as the product of conjugates. And that means here I have three numbers multiplied together. And the zero products property works for any number of uh, factors. So here I have three factors, which means that at least one of them has to be equal to zero. Well, the first factor is a constant five, and five is never going to be zero. So either 2c plus 3 equals zero, or 2c minus 3 equals zero, which would give me 2c equals negative 3, or 2c equals 3. So c equals 3 halves, or negative 3 halves. That's my solution set. Now, here we're getting another preview because we can use this same technique if we can factor a polynomial uh, of a higher degree. This is not a quadratic polynomial. This is a cubic polynomial. But we have a common factor of 2p. And we can factor the, bi I mean the quadratic inside the parentheses as p minus 4 times p plus 2. So now here I have three factors, and their product equals 0. So at least one of them has to be 0. And in this case, this outside factor is not a constant. It's 2p. So I'll have 2p equals 0, or p minus 4 equals 0, or p plus 2 equals 0. So I'll get three possible solutions. p equals 0, p equals 4, or p equals negative 2.